Why, hello, and welcome to another episode of Sinister Creations. Um, first off, I wanted to thank everybody for all of the love I received on the last video for the Scorpio Claws. I really appreciate all of you who commented, who bought a pattern. If you did, I want to see them when they're done. I want to see what you make. I want to see every claw that you've made from this video, and I want to shout you out. So if you've made something that I've inspired you, any of my videos, um, I'd love you to message me, Instagram, tag, YouTube, however, let me know so I can put it in the next video and give you a shout out because I think that's amazing. I want to see it all. With that said, let's get started on what we're working on today. Um, if you want to give me one second, I will go grab it. So what we're going to be working on today is kitty ears. ears. Well, Alien kitty ears. God, I look good. <laughs> Alien kitty ears. So these are my Zethrid ears. Oh, that did not turn out well. I made these uh, for cosplay last year. I really liked how I look in these ears. And I'm going to be making a new pair for season eight. Really like how I look in these ears, which is cool because it's a little bit different, but quite similar. So we're going to be working on these. So if you've got any um, paladins to crush, I, that, that was a bad joke. Let's get started. So starting off with the materials we are going to need for this project, EVA foam. I've got five millimeter and one centimeter EVA foam here. I'm gonna be using the five millimeter more often, but use what you have. It should work either way. I've also got contact cement for gluing, X-Acto knife for cutting, heat gun for shaping, Something to sand with. I'm going to be using the sanding belt, but you can use hand sanding materials. They should work just as well. You're going to need wax paper, some sort of tacky glue. I like um, the fabric fusion. It seems to work really well for me. And some source of hair. These are some cheap wigs I got off of Amazon. Um, you can also use any wefts or weaves that you have that are the color you want. Or Yarn is actually pretty good if you brush it out. It would be nice and fluffy. If I could find it in the right colors, I'd probably use that too. So let's get started. So what we're going to be doing is creating a helmet that we attach the ears to. This is going to make it easier to take it on and off at the con. It gets a little warm, but it's not too bad. It's actually pretty comfortable to wear. So I'm using this pattern here. This is not my pattern. This is Evil Ted's Magneto helmet. I've used it for a few projects and it works exceptionally well. I'll put a link down where you can go buy that from him. When you are printing out the pattern, um, make sure it fits snugly. I actually did fit to page rather than the 100% the actual size that the pattern is supposed to be just because it fits my head a little snugger and so when I move back and forth it doesn't shift or change or anything. So you want to make sure that this helmet, it's comfortable, but it fits. You don't want it to be moving around. So as I usually do, I am using a heat gun to help me form the foam. Um, and I have an acrylic half sphere to help get that complex curve on the sides of the helmet. I'm doing this mostly just to help it be more the shape I want before I glue it together. I will be using contact cement. As usual, you want to make sure that the glue is on both sides of your seam. Let it dry till it's nice and tacky and then stick it together. I also uh, eventually lined it with a little bit of foam clay just because I am impatient with glue and this helps seal it a little nicer for me. So actually the foam clay is not a great idea. I did wear this to a con. Your head gets a little sweaty. Doesn't matter what you're wearing, wig or that, you're gonna get a little sweaty. And once the foam clay gets a little damp, it kind of goes back to its softer, mushy state. So I had some black stuff in my hair. Um, it wasn't too bad. I mean, it's manageable, I, it's not awful but it might be something you want to avoid. So just make sure you glue it really good. So I am stopping the video right here to explain a thing or two. After I made this new headpiece with ears for my Zethrid Warlord costume, I flew to Vancouver and I put it in my checked baggage and it did not fare well. I didn't pack it quite as well as I could and I'm sure Air Canada was not very gentle with my bag. As you can see, there's this gapping that's happening with the ears. I don't really like how that looks, so I decided I am going to remake the entire central helmet piece. I'll recycle the ears, but I'm going to do this in a way that that gapping is going to be much more minimal. As you can see, to start off with that method, I actually cut ear holes in the actual helmet for my ears to stick out. This is to prevent them from pushing the foam outwards and making more problems with that gapping. 
Now, once you have the helmet the way you want with the proper ear holes, if you like, uh, it's time to draw Zethrid's hairline. I've outlined it right here. You can see the both the pictures where we are showing you how her hairline kind of looks. Um, what I have done is I've obviously drawn it on while I'm wearing the helmet to see where it's going to land. And once I started cutting, I took my favorite side, cut it, folded it over the other side, traced it again, and cut it that way to make sure it was completely symmetrical because symmetry is good. So you wanna make sure when you are cutting this hairline that it is tight enough to your face. This is part of the gapping problem I had is I made the hairline a little too wide so the helmet itself didn't come back in and stick to my face the way I wanted to. Once you have that hairline the way you want it, what you're gonna do is you're going to cover the holes that we made for the ears. We're gonna cover those with fabric. You're gonna glue it down with fabric glue. You don't have to prime your foam at all because it's gonna make it more porous and the glue's gonna adhere really well. It's time to make the ears. Now, I tend to freehand draw what I want for the ears. I wanna make sure they're a little bit taller than what I actually need because I'm going to have the foam curl over just to be that little lip. Um, so I did this freehand. Um, you don't have to. You can trace any reference photos you have or I may put up what I've made, if you guys are interested, let me know in the comments below and you can grab that and use that for your patterns. Since I am doing season eight Zethrid, her ears are asymmetrical because of the burns. Um, you should only have to draw one of these if you're doing a previous version because the ears are the same. You just take one, flip it over and draw it the other way. Once you have your patterns drawn for the ear, you actually want to test them out with the helmet you got. Um, if you notice, she has this little like piece of her hairline that comes forward a little bit. Like, so there's the triangle and then there's two little bits that come in. That's where I kind of want the edges of the ears to sit. So I'm testing it out, seeing if my pattern is actually appropriate for the size that I want. Um, the first version of this I did, I actually made the ears a little wider and a little bigger than I wanted. Um, if you look at her proportionally, they're not actually so huge. They're not the width of her shoulders. Now I am not the same proportions of Zethrid, so it doesn't always work out completely, but I made them a little bit smaller this time um, just to deal with that. Once we have the pattern the way we like it, we're going to cut out the ears. As I said, if you're doing season eight like me, there are two separate looking ears because one's all chewed up and burnt and the other is normal. Otherwise, you just want to flip your pattern to draw the second ear. So we cut those out. We're going to start shaping them again with the heat gun. Um, I'm curling over the top to try and get that cupping of the ears because ears are not just flat. Um, so you want to make sure you've got that curl. And again, I like to pin it to the helmet to kind of figure out how it's going to look. So because it's all for the aesthetic, guys, you got to make sure it's going to look good. I also actually, when I pinned it to the helmet, taped down that curve just because sometimes if the foam sits, if you heat it up and you just let it sit with a little extra curl in it or a little extra shape, just keeping it there, it tends to stay a lot better in the end, um, at least in my personal opinion. So I'm not actually finished with the ears here. I'm actually going to be cutting out some shapes similar to them um, just because Again, ears are not flat, they're multi-dimensional. They have a little bit of bulk to them, especially at the back. There's like kind of almost like a, a little semi-sphere at the back of even the human ear. So I'm kind of faking that a little bit by cutting out the thicker foam, gluing it together. I'm gonna be sanding it down to make the edges nice and neat. Um, I've done this quite messily because I usually do rely a lot on my sander if um, you wanna cut the edges a little more angle to make it a lot easier you can do that as well you can just leave the flat ears they still look pretty good I mean it's hardly noticeable it's just a little thing that I kind of want to add once you have the ears shaped the way you like you want to make sure you glue them together so you're gonna glue as I said that little lip of the curve is gonna be right where the hairline kind of extends the second time so so as you can see, we don't have that gapping problem anymore, which was really bothering me. Um, and that's also because my ears, which were causing the gapping problem, have a little bit of relief. Um, so pretty good, I think. So the next part's a little tedious, but it's also a little fun. You're gonna get your wax paper and lay it down, and then you're gonna get whatever tacky glue you're using. Um, again, I like Fabric Fusion. It just seemed to work a little better. So you take your glue and you make a little strip of it. 
and you cut your hair. I like to cut it in small manageable lengths. Um, what you're going to do is you're going to take that le those lengths and just pat them down on top of that little line of glue. You don't want all of the hair into the glue, you just want an edge. Um, kind of like a root, like actual hair roots are. This method is something I discovered the first time I made them because I tried to glue like all the hairs down individually the first time I did this and it was not only tedious, didn't quite look as good and then I also found that I just didn't have enough hair, I didn't have enough time. This way you get a lot more coverage a lot quicker. So it's the method I'm going with. I do enjoy doing this, it's kind of fun. You are going to have hair everywhere. There is no ifs, ands, or buts, it is going to be everywhere have a vacuum ready otherwise you're just gonna be covered with purple and pink hair that's that's an inevitability while you're making these little hair tuft things make sure some of them like spread out and some of them come to a point at the end so um, have a wider base with the glue and have the hair come together this is really useful for those edges right at the end of the ear tips kind of thing so it sort of comes into a nice little tuft you want to make these for both the purple and the pink hair because you want enough for both. If you don't have enough done, you can make more as you go. Um, it's really hard to gauge how many of them you're gonna actually need to cover the entire head. So once you've glued all those hairs down, it is time to let that glue dry. You just wanna leave it for a little bit, a couple hours, half a day, whatever, and then you come back to it and you can just peel those little individual hair patches off, um, which is super useful, super nice. I never make enough, but it's okay because you can go back and make more. It's really easy. Um, I still have quite a bit of length on those wigs, so I'm always available to go back and do more. So once you've peeled those hair pieces off and you have a good amount of them, you want to start gluing everything down. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to start actually on the edges. Yeah, hair roots actually start kind of in the middle of the head, but we're gluing this backwards basically. So you wanna glue your edges first so you have those loose unglued tips of hair facing out because then it looks better, it looks nicer and it's, it's a little cleaner. So you wanna put some glue on the head piece and then take the pieces of the hair that you like and glue those down leaving just a little bit to go over the edge of the foam. Um, this is great, we're gonna be trimming it eventually so don't worry if it doesn't look quite right right away. Um, we're going to cut it to make it look a little more natural anyway. So as I said, you're starting at the edges and you're coming in. I've kind of done like a circular sort of hairline in the center of the back of her head. That's kind of where all of the hair is going to. Um, figuring out a part is really hard when it's more like fur than hair. So I kind of did it that way. So since this is season eight Zethrid, I am not going to have the same hair on the burn side of her ears. I am not gonna leave it bare though. What I'm going to do is cut the hair into much smaller, little tiny pieces, make it fuzzier, make it a little more coarse. And so what I'm gonna do there is I'm just gonna take that coarse hair and glue it directly onto my foam. Kind of the same way you would if you were trying to cover something with sand, right? You put the glue down, you put the hair in this case over top, and then you just make sure that you spread it out so it covers everything. This is to kind of give it a little bit of a shorter look. It's to give it a messier look because let's be, face it, season eight Zethrid is a mess. I love her, but she's a bit of a mess. So we glue that down. I've also painted over it just because I only have the two colors of hair, but as you can see in the reference image, she has a more faded burnt look to that hair. It's a different color. It's slightly um, grayed out. So I'm painting over it to kind of help with that. I do that a second time that's not here in this video because I didn't actually like the debt. There was no definition between the colors and you want to make sure people can tell that there's two sides to it. So I painted over that. Um, I made sure it was a thinner paint. You don't want to use something that's going to clump your hair. So I actually took acrylics and then or airbrush paints and I added a little bit of alcohol to kind of thin it out. Um, that way you don't have the hair clumping quite as badly. Now it's not too big of an issue because as I said, this is her messy burnt side of her ears. So clumpy isn't horrible. It kind of adds to the effect, but I figured that's the way I'm going to do it. Once you have the hair all laid out the way you want and it has dried, please wait for it to dry. That glue doesn't dry instantly 
and while it is incredibly frustrating let it dry before you do any trimming um, so we're going to cut the hair a little bit the way we want but you just take your scissors and you trim it you want it to look a little more natural you don't want everything to be straight lines so um so trim that off get it looking the way you want and then you're done well aside from the makeup but you're done you have a pair of zethrid ears <laughs> That is how I made my lovely pair of Galra ears. Anyway, um, as you can see, these ones are much more snug. They're not gonna slide or slip as much throughout the day. And again, beautiful, no gapping. My ears are completely hidden. I am not in the full makeup. Unfortunately, me doing the full makeup for this video was when I realized how bad the gapping in the original ears were. And I am not putting that makeup back on right now because of reasons. Please still have an eyebrow. Please still have an eyebrow. Please still have an eyebrow. A knitting. Yeah, that's, those are the reasons. <laughs> um, thanks everybody for all the love, all the support on the last video. If you are making anything based on my videos, I want to see it because I want to feature you guys in the end of my next video. I want to see it. So if you want to actually see this full costume, I did do some videos on TikTok, um, or you could check out my Instagram. Uh, everything is under random sin. I'm just basically a giant dork. That's really the long and short of it. Let me know what you might want to see in the next video. Yes, the Scorpio tail is coming. I am working on it, but I'm not quite finished yet. So hopefully that'll be the next video I have out. This has been a lot of fun, guys. I hope this was informative. Thanks again to those who bought the pattern and wrap it up.